All right, so this is the organic program uh, here at Lane. Let's talk, what are you trying to achieve here? We're trying to do two or three different things, but really what it comes down to, we're trying to produce food, locally grown food, mm -hmm. food for the consumers. We're trying to grow foods that might be grown in seasons that wouldn't be grown uh, normally in Oklahoma. Now, how do you mean there? Okay, you know, uh, most of the vegetables, fruits, things of that sort in Oklahoma are going to be harvested June, July, and August. Warm, okay. warm weather crops for the most part. Right. Uh, we, we've been working some with uh, trying to match up markets and production seasons and demands between farmers and schools so that a farmer can produce while a school is in session. So they're not producing during the summer, they're producing when the school's there to buy it. And let's take a look here. We've got, we've got some broccoli, some carrots, uh, some different lettuces, uh, tomatoes, of That's course. Right. Mm -hmm. ne nearly all of these crops are, uh, we sometimes just call them our cool season crops. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that they could be grown and harvested uh, during the months that the school's in session, fall, right. fall and spring. Okay, now of course we're in one of these hoop houses that we keep hearing about while we're mm -hmm. here. Talk, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the structure. What, what are the benefits we get? There's a lot of benefits on this. Uh, for one thing, you've got hail protection. Mm -hmm. For one thing, you've got wind protection. For one thing, you've got temperature modification. Uh, if the sides right now are open, but in the fall or spring or winter, we can lower the sides, mm -hmm. we can enclose the ends on the building, and uh, we can really raise the temperature inside without any supplemental heat okay. of any kind. So it's, it's really, it's, uh, it's climate modification, you might say, as far as temperature, uh, humidity, right. wind. Now, I guess one of the things too is this, this keeps some of the rain off the leaves and in organics, that's a, you tell me it's mm -hmm. an important deal. We found out that if the foliage stays dry, you're not gonna have very much of a problem with these foliar diseases because they have to have moisture on the leaf in order for the disease to take hold and to flourish. It pretty well eliminates the rain and uh, really, really reduces, if not totally eliminates the dew. So we have drier foliage okay. and less foliar diseases on the plants. All right, now I understand you're doing some other things with tomatoes, some grafting tomatoes? Yeah, yeah, we're doing that from a disease control standpoint. All right, well, let's go take a look at that. Okay. So over here, you're grafting tomatoes. Tell me about that. What's the, what's the problem we're, we're addressing here? Primarily, we're trying to address a problem of root-borne diseases. Okay. We know that some of the tomato varieties seem to be a little bit more resistant to some certain root pathogens, mm -hmm. Fusarium perhaps being one of them. Okay. We've worked quite a bit with some of the heirloom tomatoes because the heirlooms are, are really popular. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the color, the taste, a lot of people just really like some of those things. Right. But the roots on some of them might not have as much disease resistance as others do. Okay. So essentially what we're trying to do is take the root off of a tomato, mm -hmm. or we've even worked with eggplants in this case too. Okay. Uh, take the root that's relatively disease resistant and then combine it with a top from a tomato plant that might, uh, it might have the color you want or the size you want or the taste or what, whatever qualities you're after. And, and what you get is this right here, the, the grafted plant. That's right, that's right. See, I guess that's the, they call it the, the wedge graft. Yeah, yeah, wedge graft, sometimes called like a cleft graft, but uh, yeah, essentially what we'll have, we'll have a root stock and then we'll have a top. We're still pretty early in this research. Uh, this is our second year in it, and we, we've got, again, at different locations. We're working with the guys at the Curse Center, and the plants that we have here, they have also taken there, and we're also working with farmers in Tulsa. So this is uh, replicated both at Lane and at the Curse Center and in Tulsa. So we've got three locations, and we'll be gathering the results and putting it all together and seeing how it works not just in southeastern Oklahoma, but through other locations throughout the state okay. as well. How does the scale up to production scale production? Basically anything that we're doing here we think has application mm -hmm. from a commercial standpoint. Uh, now the size, uh, you know, that, that'll vary from place to place and person to person. But if you're talking about fresh, homegrown, organic tomatoes at, oh, I don't know, $3 a pound or maybe more than that mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of acreage to have a heck of a lot of value coming out of it. And it's not only tomatoes, it applies to other crops as well, but uh, you can be commercial on a, a relatively small acreage with these crops. 
Ah. And especially if you're going with a hoop house system where you can extend into the fall and into the spring, you can be producing not one you're crop a year. You're season when your money's coming you're, in. You're extending the season all year long. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. We sure appreciate you showing us around. Some hey, great research. Glad to do it. Glad to do it.